From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Coming up next is Live at 5 on WCTE PBS and its streaming platforms to provide updates on communities throughout Central Tennessee. Welcome to this episode of Live at Five. We are excited to you're here joining us today. We've got some great conversations with some people, local people in our community that are doing some great things and also opening up nature to us in a whole new way. First up, we have our guest, uh, Jacob Young. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do at Fall Creek Falls and, and how can we get out and enjoy ourselves? Yeah, I'm the park manager here at Fall Creek Falls State Park. I've been with Tennessee State Parks for around 17 years now. I've been at Fall Creek Falls for the last five as the park manager. And uh, here at the park, we've got this, you know, Fall Creek Falls is over 30,000 acres or right at 30,000 acres. And we're seeing about a million and a half visitors a year. And um, we've got a little bit of everything here from fishing, hiking, mountain biking, camping, cabins. Um, my, my note here says you have a swinging bridge and treetop adventures. So we've got um, swinging bridges that's been here for many years. And um, about a year ago, we got two of those replaced. So our piney swinging bridge and the one behind the nature center and literally thousands of people a day in the summer go across them. They're beautiful views of the gorge. And then the treetop adventures is um, something that you can sign up and do here in the village in the in the warmer months of the year. They're generally closed during the winter, but it's more than a zip line course. So you actually get to climb up through the treetop and then zip line from uh, one, one, um, one activity to the other. Uh, it's pretty intense. The, the upper level kind of scared me to be honest with you. I was gonna say, if you're afraid of heights, is that gonna be a problem? Oh yeah, I'm afraid of heights and I made myself do it though. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll challenge you, no doubt. Fantastic, fantastic. So there's lots of ways that people can overnight at the park. Uh, we've talked to, we're gonna speak to Zonda who's seeing the new lodge there on site, but people can camp, they can bring their RVs uh, and enjoy kind of some outdoors, fresh outdoors. Yeah, we've got over 200 campsites, um, 222 RV sites. Um, we've also got primitive tent sites, we've got youth camps, we've got group sites for church groups and, and Girl Scout and Boy Scout groups that you can reserve at the Eli Fields, what used to be the old horse stables. Uh, so lots of different overnight accommodations here at the park. That's great. And you do offer some educational classes. You talked a little bit about some snakes and little critters, but it's a great way for kids to really be introduced to nature by attending some of these classes. Yeah, and in our summer months, we have uh, seasonal rangers that are really, they're, they're training to be park rangers when they get out of college. And they do interpretive programs all day up into the night. And a lot of those programs are still free. There's a few like a pontoon boat ride that we'll charge for, but they can go out and do campfires and, and hikes and uh, just a little bit of everything, uh, history, crafting, and our park rangers do programs as well. In the summer, they're doing a lot of law enforcement and medical and other resource management work. But we also get into the schools. Uh, anytime, you know, schools or teachers call, we try our best to go to the schools and do educational programs for them. So there's a lot of opportunities here. Oh, of course. How did you ever decide that you wanted to be a park ranger or park manager? Well, I love nature and I like teaching people about nature. And, and probably my favorite thing about the job is um, working with kids and just seeing them have that connection with the resource. And I think as rangers, that's what we strive to do. And I get to do a lot of that. And I, as I've told you before, um, I know it's weird, but I've done that with a reptile. I've done that with a snake and salamanders and frogs, and you can really draw children in that way. Um, and they take that with them for the rest of their life. They never forget it. Absolutely. It's definitely a, a way to introduce nature and it also helps them respect nature too. I think once they see how vulnerable it can be, it, it changes how they may treat nature and, and their perspective on things. So you're doing a lot Absolutely. more than just offering a little uh, a pet here or there. So thank you for that work. <laughs> um, how has the park attendance changed since COVID? 
Well, last year was arguably one of the busiest years that we have seen and in, in back since the lodge was open. So we got up to over 1.5 million visitors, probably closer to 2 million, to be honest with you. So we were overrun, but while it was hard on our staff, it was pretty cool to see the public reconnect with our parks and with nature and just to realize the value of being outside and connecting and, and trying to, to, uh, to turn it off um, and get back to nature. So that happened and what it has done is just tied people back into our park. So a lot of them went out and bought kayaks, they bought mountain bikes. You know this if you've been to the store and tried to find one, oh, yeah. um, campers. Uh, so it's been really good for our parks and it's kind of leveled off this year and uh, it's a manageable number, but we found a lot of new folks uh, mm -hmm. through COVID, which was a good thing in a bad situation. Right, absolutely. And Tennessee has quite a few parks. Do you know how many right offhand? We have 56 state parks and I do not want to quote the natural areas, but we have more natural areas than that. Um, so there is a lot of land. And then you've also got national forests and state forests and TWRA land. So there, there are a lot of protected properties out there that you can go and hunt and fish and hike and do all the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. You know, that you, once you have it, you can never, you know, you only hold on to it because you can't get it back if you ever destroy it. So uh, we definitely want to preserve those areas and we encourage people to go out because when they visit the parks, I mean, that is a little bit of a revenue source for you all to help continue to do all the great work that you're doing there. Uh, any last words that you have for our uh, viewers tonight? Um, no, it's just you've got a lot of really cool resources in your back door. Um, if we just think of the towns that are within an hour of Fall Creek Falls, and then from your location, there are a lot of parks that are close to there as well. Um, a lot of good opportunities right here at home. You know, there's nothing wrong with going to the beach or wherever you go, but you don't have to do that. We've got great opportunities right here. So please come out and take advantage of those. And some of the new things that we've been talking about with our visitor center and bridges and lodge, please come see us. Yeah, absolutely. So you can, this is Falk, um, Jacob Young with Fall Creek Falls. And uh, what a great place, beautiful Tennessee areas to be and explore. So get out this weekend or any weekend coming up and enjoy those, those natural habitats. You can also enjoy nature on WCTE on Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock. Uh, we also have a show called The Great Pacific. So check your lo local listings for those programming. And we'll be right back. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Pride, editor of the Herald Citizen, with your story of the week. A former Cookville councilman and a real estate agent are resurrecting an effort to allow property owners who don't reside in the city limits to vote in city elections. Real estate agent Amber Flynn Jarrett owns property in Cookville but doesn't live in the city. She said a lot of cities have a provision in their charters to allow for non-residential voting, including bigger cities like Knoxville and towns as small as Monterey. Council members had a few questions about the proposal, including whether or not these property owners could run for city council and how many similar sized cities allow non-residential voting. The city attorney and city manager are being asked to research the answers to those questions and present information back to the council within the next two weeks. Only two of the current members were part of the council in 2017 when former councilman Dwight Henry proposed that the city change its charter to allow non-residential voting. At that time, only three council members voted in favor of it, just short of the four required to forward the change to the state legislature. Proponents argue that property owners should be allowed to vote in the city where they pay property taxes, but opponents said people who want to vote in city elections should live in the city. It's unclear how many more people could be allowed to vote in Cookville elections under the proposal. Cookville has 18,777 registered voters, but only 5,400 voted in the last city election. In 2017, 1,500 property tax notices were mailed to addresses outside the city, but the number may also include residents whose tax notices are sent to a mortgage company. To read more about this story, go to herald-citizen.com or pick up our Wednesday print edition. Thank you and good night.
Welcome to the Sports Wrap-Up. I'm Noah McKay with the Upper Cumberland Reporter. Let's take a look at the sports landscape. The high school basketball regular season is in the home stretch, and teams across the area are battling for postseason positioning. The Cookville Lady Cavaliers secured the District 9 4A title on Tuesday night with a dominant 63-40 win over the 8th-ranked Lebanon Devilettes on the road. The Lady Cavs improved to 24-0 and are two wins away from an undefeated regular season. Elsewhere on Tuesday, the Cavs earned a big 56-47 win over Lebanon. Upperman split their matchups with Stone Memorial, with the Lady Bees and Panthers each taking wins. The York Dragonettes and Dragons swept their road matchups against Clay County, and each Pickett County team got back into the win column with a sweep over Clark Range. Looking ahead to Friday, Clay County will host Pickett County in a pair of top five matchups. Upperman will travel to Cumberland County. York will host Jackson County, and Livingston Academy will host White County. In that girls game, first place in District 7 AAA is on the line. Those games will be streamed live on the UCR Facebook page. Hey, join us Saturday night live on WCTE PBS when Tennessee Tech hosts Belmont with the women's game starting at 5.30 and the men's at 7.30 p.m. That was the sports wrap-up. I'm Noah McKay. Have a great day. All right, and another very special guest here on Live at Five, a fan favorite, Mary Boring. Welcome to WCT's Live at Five. Welcome. Hello, Avery. Congrats on being who you are, which is a delightful <laughs> human. And now you're the big girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get to do all the fun, fun stuff, um, like interview people on Live at Five. So. Thank five you. At five, what a great thing y'all are doing. Thank you for having me here. I'm really delighted for it. Absolutely. So Mary Bory is the owner of Better Me. It's a yoga place right here in Cookville. And yep. you didn't start out as a yogi, did you? No, no, <laughs> I sure did not. <laughs> so tell me, That's just a... tell our viewers, just how did you get to this space? Because I'm sure there's lots of people that are interested in yoga or maybe thinking about how they can improve themselves in this new year. And I know you have some tricks. Absolutely. Well, you know, I started practicing yoga, oh, probably, oh, 10 or 12 years ago, I reckon. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And I knew that it made me feel better. And then, and what does that mean by better? Well, the breathing, gosh, that's the key to it all, y'all. When you are able to get those deep breaths and come down into the belly and get up out of here at the chest, we all breathe up here. You know, it's, it's the fight or flight response or the fight or fright or freeze. And when you come down to your belly and have those deep breaths, that's what really starts to change your brain and your body a lot. So I found that I really liked yoga and then, you know, life came in the way. Anybody out there had life get in their way and, and, and different things happen. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I didn't think I'd ever be here. So I found myself there and I had a friend who told me, that I should consider going to this yoga studio and taking a class, and I did. And the same person said, why don't you consider teaching yoga? You know, I've got a, a teaching background. I've done a lot of computer software for the WCTE. I did a lot of work over there. Very grateful for that experience. And then I decided to become a yoga instructor. And it was really hard work, but very, very um, satisfying. Uh, and then I thought, ah, maybe I'll open a studio and, you know, I went over here with this part of life and went over there with that part of life. And then uh, uh, it has, as happens for most of us, I know it's happened for you, Avery. And for a lot of us, a set of circumstances just started rolling together. And I had an opportunity to get into this beautiful building over here on the West side. And uh, I decided to open a yoga studio. Ah! You just took a leap We're and there you went, right? Absolutely. You know, there's a great saying, leap and the net will appear. Wow. That's what, that's one of my favorite sayings. Sometimes or just closing you just your eyes and fall leaping. on the ground, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that the net makes you bounce. Maybe yeah. that's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the acrobat people. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, um, we'll be in May. It'll be four years that we've been open. Incredible. That of course, you know, with a global pandemic, it all feels like it was just yesterday. But right. uh, so yeah, and um, I called it a Better Me Yoga. A lot of people wonder why you call it a Better Me Yoga. Well, before I opened the studio and when I was practicing, Avery, a lot of people would say to me, well, what is it about yoga? And I would say, the practice of yoga makes me a better me. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Right. The person, a lot, lot of my friends go, you've known me a long time. You know me pre-yoga. They would say, we really like yoga, Mary. 
<laughs> what that means, but okay. <laughs> I like Yoga Mary as well. And that's why I really felt like a Better Me Yoga was, was called to me to just be something to let folks really feel that sense of being a better them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's really a, the practice of yoga and mindfulness in general. Maybe, you know, yoga is not your thing, but if you practice mindfulness and start quieting your mind and breathing, it doesn't require four hours a day. It's stopping and maybe staring out the window right. or taking yep. a walk, you yep. know? meditation um just yeah. like you said just kind of slowing down a little bit and i think in this crazy world we do we just go 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 or rushing absolutely our kids filling every second of our day with something and you know we we could er gain a lot by kind of pausing reflecting uh really thinking about what matters in our day-to-day -day life and why we're here so um i know your studio has a thing called hot yoga yeah, it does. Which right now, with it being so chilly out, that sounds really delightful. But tell us about what is. hot yoga and why would somebody want to do that? Well, there's a variety of different styles of yoga that are considered hot yoga. There's one that's real specific. When people think of hot yoga, they think of something we call the hot 26. But we've incorporated uh, heat into almost every yoga uh, class that we have here at the studio so that you have the ability to warm your body up. Do y'all remember Silly Putty? You remember Silly Putty? Mm -hmm. I love Silly It had that little A, right, right? <laughs> Me too. And you would, do you remember putting it on like um, the funny papers, the comics, and it would reflect back onto it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-oh, I think we just maybe said how long we've been along in life. But anyway. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> We do yoga, Mary. We do yoga. We're going to live forever. We do. We do. If you would take um, Silly Putty out of that ball and you pull it, it pulled in, in two pieces. But when you warmed it up in your hands, it turned into what was called putty. Mm -hmm. And that's very similar to what heat does to your muscles. It warms them up so it lengthens them and it helps you have less injuries. Um, the heat is super good for folks who have joint challenges or things like that, because it really warms your body. And then all that sweating, it's really very good for you. It detoxes your body. Um, it's just good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and certainly any type of yoga is good. I tell people all the time, practice at home, find the yoga classes that you're going to find there on WCTE, or go to YouTube, or go to any studio, just do something that's good for you and makes your body feel good. And that same thing we talked about being mindful, taking a minute twice a day or three times a day, stopping, breathing in through your nose and ah, through your nose. You'll just be amazed at how that calms your mind, whether it's traffic or the kids or the significant other or the boss right. <laughs> or any of those things that Cheryl- I already does. feel better. Right? You do. It's, it's, yeah. um, it is a physiological response. It truly, it, it's when you're breathing deeply like that, your body realizes you're not trying to run from an adversary. A lion is not trying to eat you. Right. So, <laughs> you know, thank God, let's hope there's no lions. No Although lions. we did have bears. We did have bears. Remember when oh. we had bears here about like yes, three years I do ago? Yeah. Yeah, I think Four he was over ago. by your yoga studio, actually. Maybe he was, he was. looking for a little I yoga. <laughs> Yogi bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, Mary, <laughs> you are always so creative and fun. And thank you for that. It looks like our time is, is rolling off. But I do want to remind our viewers at home that we have Monday through fi Friday a sit and be fit, Mary, if you get up at five in the morning and want to do that. We also have a classic stretch at 530. And these are always great ways to start your day. And again, awesome. do your breathing and kind of get your day off to a really great start. And if yep. you want to, if you're interested in yoga and want to Check, check out a class. Mary, where would they find you? Um, at abettermeyoga.com is our website. And we're over here on the west side, 26 West 4th. That's 4th and Mailer. Um, I'm so grateful that you called and I could spend mm -hmm. some time with you guys and mm -hmm. talking to everybody out there. Move your body, take a walk, breathe, breathe. Oh. Watch some WCTE classic stretches. Listen and watch all the great content that you can find there. Create Channel. You know, I love me some Create Channel. It's my favorite thing ever. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you Have so much. Happy 2022, and we will see you soon. Same to you, y'all. See ya. Happy Live at Five. A better me, yoga.
Welcome to your February PBS Passport Update. I'm Josh Deepin with WCTE PBS. In honor of Black History Month and our nation's presidents, we at WCTE PBS wanted to give a shout out to the critically acclaimed programming PBS has to offer. And what better way to do that than by exploring the added membership benefit of PBS Passport. For all the foodies out there, PBS Passport has you covered with the acclaimed series No Passport Required. Join renowned chef Marcus Samuelson as he treks across America to uncover the culinary ingenuity from a variety of backgrounds. The show is only on PBS Passport, which you can access through your WCTE PBS membership. If you're looking for a scripted series to sink your teeth into, Atlantic Crossing tells the story of a secret relationship between President Franklin D. Roosevelt and Norwegian Princess Martha. In their own words, explores the life of Jimmy Carter from working as a poor rural peanut farmer to becoming the 39th President of the United States. If you're still looking for something to binge after brushing up on American history, every single episode of the critically acclaimed series Downton Abbey and Broadchurch is available for streaming on PBS Passport. No other streaming service offers both of these shows at no additional cost, so with PBS Passport, you can immerse yourself in the world of British drama at the click of a button. And lastly, for that special someone or for that treat yourself meal you've been wanting to get around to cooking, take a look at The French Chef with Julia Child. With PBS Passport, you can watch over 20 of Julia Child's most famous recipes. If you are interested in becoming a member of WCTE PBS to have access to the added benefit of Passport, you can find all the information you need by going to wcte.org forward slash passport or by scanning the QR code below with your smart device. Right now you can access all the shows I mentioned and much more anytime, anywhere, on the web or on the WCTE PBS video app. That concludes our Passport update. I'm Josh Deepin, happy streaming and see you next time. Hi, I'm Gail Kunish, project manager at Tennessee PBS, and I love to cuddle up with my grand dog Cabernet to watch season two of All Creatures Great and Small through my Passport membership on WCTE PBS. Rescue pets rock. Adopt, don't shop. Thank you for joining this section of Live at Five. Uh, we're going to wrap up today's show with Zonda Holloway. She's also with Fall Creek Falls and is excited to share with us a whole new renovation that they've been working on out at Fall Creek Falls. How long has it been going on, your, your new renovation? Well, actually, it's not a renovation. It's a brand new rebuild. Um, the old inn was torn down, um, well, it was closed down. It'll be four years this coming April. And so we now have the new uh, lodge. The old one was the inn. Now it's the lodge at Fall Creek Falls. And um, it is opened right at the moment. We are doing a soft opening in our dining room and also our lodge. Um, just due to getting staff uh, trained and on board. So right now we have 33 of our 85 sleeping rooms open. And as of tomorrow, we'll be opening up 33 more. So that'll be our second and third floor will be open, opened. So um, we uh, do have a dining room with a full bar. Uh, the dining room seats 116 people. And we also have 40 additional outdoor seating uh, that of course people haven't started using it right now, but we know they will come spring and summertime. Oh, so we're excited absolutely. about that. We have a full conference space. We have um, 13, uh, let me check to see. We've got 3,784 square feet of conference space. So we can take care of your weddings. We can take care of your corporate events. Uh, we can take care of your family reunions. Any, any type of event that you're needing, um, we, we can take care of that. Mm -hmm. We were able to get a really, really wonderful staff hired and we are still, of course, currently training them, um, but we are really, really busy already with what we've got. Well, I know that's just super exciting for you guys. Um, and being a state park, I mean, that, that you have a lot of visitors. How many visitors would you say come through a year? Oh, just in the lodge. Now, I'm, I'm not sure what the numbers will be here, but in our old law again, um, I don't really know the, the, the true numbers, but it was a lot. I mean, I, I'm thinking just in the restaurant alone, we, we fed, we would feed five to 7,000 people a week in our restaurant. Oh, wow. Wow. So, and I expect that to be every bit of that here and then some. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of um, 
interest already in the um, booking for the hotel and also the dining. Right now, we are we are really booked. Probably we're booked already for the entire year. I mean, we've got a few spaces, you know, but but we've already got a lot of corporate groups booked with us. That's so I mean, that is just it really is a testament to the great work that you all are doing out there. How long did it take to build the new lodge? Well, the it took a, probably about a two year process. Mm -hmm. um, it it was shut down four year ago, come April, and um, they didn't start the construction right away. So um, I, I'm thinking the construction was probably around a two year period. Um, we we are fortunate that we have um, around 52 employees working for us at the moment and 21 of those employees are full-time positions. So that's been amazing for the community to be able to offer those jobs to the people in this area. So we're really thankful for that. Absolutely. And how long have you been there? 38 years. Wow. Yeah. I and and that when I was very young. <laughs> Just a teenager, I'm certain. Oh, well, <laughs> not much more. I think I actually, I think I was 21. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. Well, I'm I'm and the park, the park's been really good to me. I, I've enjoyed my career here at the park. Mm -hmm. And what is your role at the park? I'm the general manager. Okay. Yeah. So you just, it, I mean, you just love it. Do you have a favorite part about the park that you would want people to know about? Um, I, I really like the entire park, to be honest with you, but I guess I'm a little fond of the lodge. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really my second home. It really is. So I, I would definitely have to say the lodge, of course. I, well, I can't wait to see it. I've, I've heard amazing things about it and going to your website, it's beautiful. I mean, there's a great rendering right there. It, it looks as if it overlooks the lake possibly. It does. And, and uh, most of our rooms, um, well, all of our rooms have a water view, but um, of course, some of them have a better lakefront view but you can see the water from all of them. So really all the all of our rooms in the lodge have a wonderful view, they really do. Well, I know anybody, if, if they were interested in getting reservations, I'm assuming they would go to the website and, and fill out the registration form. Exactly, you can go to the website and that's probably gonna be the easiest because honestly, we've been having so many calls of uh, people wanting to book uh, that our phone lines have just been busy continuously. So the easiest would be on the website. Now, so we also take care of the 30 cabins here at the at the park, and they are a very, very popular place to rent as well. So um, there's a lot going through this, through this building. They really are. So, um, but yeah, the easiest way to, to book a room would be to um, go on the website and book it like that. That's fantastic. And um, what is that website real quick if someone was interested in looking for it? Just go under the, under the Tennessee State Park website and click on Fall Creek Falls. Okay. And then you'll see the, the lodge link. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Well, we, we spoke to Jacob earlier and he was telling us all about the great outdoors and all the beauty that's there. And really it's a year round activity uh, place. It's not just something you do in the summer. And, and we're just, you know, excited and, and it's a privilege to have that right here in our Upper Cumberland for our people and for our tourists that want to come and visit. Um, I do want to remind viewers at home today that this weekend um, on this Saturday, uh, we are going to be broadcasting live the Tennessee Tech basketball game, the women's and men's Belmont game. Um, Zonda, I don't know if you like basketball or not, but it'll be a lot of fun to uh, tune in and watch that. Uh, the women kick off at 530 and then the men play around 730. And then just a quick reminder that WCT's annual dinner uh, tickets go on sale February the 1st. And that annual dinner is scheduled for March the 22nd. And we hope you can join us for that. Stay tuned. Um, for more WCTE Live at 5 next week. And for now, thank you for joining us. From one neighbor to another, WCTE PBS is here for you. Join us back for the Encore on Sunday at noon. A brand new show of Live at 5 will return at 5 p.m. next Thursday. Thank you for watching.